Hey guys, back with the Zafira again today. And yeah, I know I'm sitting in the ZX, but it's not the one that's jacked up in the air. So um, what are we doing today? Well, we're gonna be chasing an oil leak. And I know we've not quite finished putting the car back together from uh, the previous video, which is uh, regarding the um, water leak problem with this car. But it makes sense to leave it apart while we clean it so we can actually get better access to a lot of the places on the uh, engine bay. And then when we finish cleaning it, we put it all back together and um, take it for a run, see where the oil's coming from and then fix the problem. So the plan for today is pretty much to show you what it looks like underneath. Then I'm gonna clean the whole of the engine bay up, probably bring you in steps at a time. I'm not gonna record it because it's quite mind-numbingly boring and quite tedious but you will be brought in occasionally just to say well look this is how far we've got so far and this is what we're using and stuff like that and etc etc so if you would like to see what a uh, Zafira engine bay looks like nice and clean stay tuned to the end and uh, you will get to see that but for now let's turn the camera around and get started so where to start guys? I've got a toolbox just there for me to stand on and you'll see why I need to stand, might need to stand on it in a, in a sec because we've got the actual car jacked up as high as we can possibly go um, safe and secure on both axle stands at the front that ain't going nowhere um, obviously like I said we've still got it all apart back here because there's no point putting that back together just yet so we can actually get a better access round here to clean round the back. We've got to clean all this up round the front here. So we've got a fair bit of uh, grime and grot down there. So that all needs cleaning up. It all needs cleaning round there as well, but I'm not too worried about the actual rocker cover or round by the spark plugs just yet, because we have got a rocker cover gasket that we need to put on. So we'll probably do that and then clean the rocker cover off of the vehicle so we end up with less of this uh, crummy rubbish going into where the spark plugs are. That's why we're not going to worry too much about the actual rocker cover cleaning that up just yet. Um, but we are going to focus mainly on down the sides, around the back, around the front and I'll take you underneath as well and we'll show you underneath. So it doesn't take a genius to notice that there's oil all over the uh, jacking point at the front. The gearbox is absolutely covered. It's all leaking around here, so... Uh, yeah, well, basically, I don't like a car when it leaks around here because that means it could possibly be the uh, crankshaft seal. Um, and if that is the case, the whole engine and gearbox needs to come out, but we hope not. Uh, but then at the same time, there's oil just up here on the back end of the gearbox the whole subframe is coated in oil the exhaust is coated in oil and the subframe around there and it's all up there as well in that gap as well so there is literally oil everywhere on this and it is suspected that it's coming from this uh, oil sensor just here but to be honest I'm not entirely sure so we're going to have to clean it all up and see if we can find the oil leak. Wish us luck, guys. So what products are we using, you might ask? And um, let me just get the cat out of the way. She's black, so I could use her to clean it, couldn't I? But maybe not. Better not. She wouldn't like me much anyway then if I did that. But anyway, so on a car-related note, we're using this stuff. Uh, it's called Gunk. And <laughs> get out of the way, Tibbles. Um... It's called Gunk uh, Foam Engine Degreasant and um, Prolonged Action, ideal for vertical surfaces. And it is supposed to go onto a warm engine, but not a hot engine. Um, but we've got no way of starting this at the moment, so we're just going to use it with a cold engine. But it is quite a hot day today. It's like temperatures of like 23, 24 degrees outside here. And I'm already sweating and it's early in the day. Um, not even done any work yet. But so we're going to run that spray that all over the engine bay nice and cold and what we've got is we've got some Poundland special hand towels and stuff we're going to use that I've uh, got this bucket we're going to put some uh, soapy water in there 
and I've also got this, uh, it says window cleaner on it, but trust me when I say this guys, that is literally just tap water. Um, just so I can uh, agitate it with uh, some normal water because I don't want to be getting a hose pipe or a pressure washer or anything on it because first of all, even when the engine is completely together, there's a lot of electrical sensitive electricals inside an engine bay anyway that I don't like the idea of using a pressure washer in an engine maybe a steam clean but I haven't got that so and I haven't got a pressure washer either but so this is the way I'm going to agitate it and put some moisture in without actually um, damaging anything in the engine bay because it's only a fine mist so it'll be enough to agitate it but not cause it to end up with loads of water in the engine so that's what I'm going to be using and don't worry, no cats were harmed in the making of this film. Just thought I'd put that disclaimer out there. <laughs> um, I'm going to crack on with getting some of this done and I'll bring you back and show you what the results are in a little while. Some little behind the scenes footage. Did that taste nice, Ian? Oh, it was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> My apprentice slash car's owner is doing all the work, really, and I do nothing. <laughs> I'm just sitting here being a lazy fart. <laughs> but no, in all, on, in all fairness, it's coming along quite nicely. We've got, um, it's coming up quite clean. Can I just ask you to jump out of the way a second? No. <laughs> Okay, I'll get you even more on the camera. <laughs> Look how shiny it's coming. Wow. It looks like a sump. Not, <laughs> not but yeah. A, not a block so, of oil. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, and then down the side here, we've got that where it was all crusty and horrible is now really, really clean compared to what it was. So now all we've got to do is let it leak oil a bit more so we can actually see where it's leaking from. But that won't happen until the engine's running. But... Yeah, so I'll bring you back again in a little while when we're done some more. And um, I think what we might do is show you the procedure on this panel and show you how we've done it. So whilst he's finishing off underneath the engine bay, this was uh, part of the wheel arch liner, which goes underneath the uh, subframe on the driver's side. It goes that way on the car. Um, as you can probably see, it's all gunky and horrible with the oil. So what we're literally going to do is we're literally just going to spray the foam on it. Let's move this out of the way. This foam goes everywhere. Move that. And literally just cate it. And you can see the foam straight away goes from pure white to a black where it's eating up the oil. And now we literally just leave that to sit for 20 minutes or so, and then we um, rinse it off. So guys, up close and personal, it's uh, so clean now, so it's like a new part, near enough. Um, certainly clean enough for me to not need to worry too much about it. So that can go back on, all nice and clean. And the engine bay is now all done as well. So the engine bay is now looking considerably cleaner. It's all cleaner up there, to a certain degree. This uh, is now clean to touch, even though it may not look like it. See, nice and clean. Well, that was all grimy and horrible. And um, I have left it overnight. And it does already look like there is a little bit of a puddle of oil there between the engine and gearbox. So it looks like we may have to have the gearbox off of this car and do a seal behind the clutch. That's a bit too much work for me to do in this video, so that'll be in a future video. And I'm not entirely sure when, because like all of us at the moment, the owner of the car is a bit limited with funds. 
along with uh, myself as well. So um, I believe that that is partly to do with the oil leak because it is already showing a bit of a bubble there. Um, but let's take you up and see around the side. So it is much cleaner inside there, even though it does have a little bit, but some of that is really quite awkward to get to. So, but it is much cleaner in there. And up the top here, it is much cleaner down there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put some before and after pictures in. Um, and then what we'll do after we've done the before and after pictures, we will get this rocker cover off, get this coil pack off, get the rocker cover off, and we'll clean this, put the new gasket on. So guys, we're going to tackle the rocker cover now and get that off. So first of all, we need a T30 Torx on the um, coil pack. Just crack these loose first. And go back up there. And just pull this out like so, that comes straight out. And now we need a E10 on the rocker cover bolts and E10 is a star type socket and that's number 10 bolt out done get up there and just lift it straight off like so and that'll just wiggle free, like so. And as we can see guys in the middle there, there's none actually in the spark plug holes, but it does look like there has been a little bit of a, a gasket seepage into the centre bit, because um, the gasket is supposed to stop any oil getting into anywhere in this middle bit. But other than that, it looks quite clean and healthy, this engine. So. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to clean all these runs up um, so it's back and nice and clean. We're going to clean all that up and we'll clean the actual uh, rock cover itself up as well. So first things first guys, we need to get this old gasket off. So just use a little flathead screwdriver and pull it out from where it is. So that is now rubbish. Get rid of that. We have the new gasket just here. But before we put that on, we're going to do the same treatment as what we've done with the uh, engine and spray some more of this gunk on. Right, so we're pretty much finished wiping down, guys. And it's not spotless, it's not sparkling, it's not shining like a new part, and it's not fantastically clean. But... It is far cleaner than it was. And to be honest, we've got a plastic cover going over the top as well and it isn't gonna be seen. So it is just a case of just to tidy it up a little bit so it looks that a little bit better. And I think now what we'll do is we will put the actual gasket in now and um, then get it popped back on the car. Right, so basically guys, we're now gonna fit the um, rocker cover gasket with new part. And we'll pull this out. Like so. Lay that on there so we know we've got it the right way round first. I need to get under there to run. That tucks that into there. So that's now pressed in all the way round, guys. That is now ready to go on the car. So we'll put you back on the, um, the bonnet grab tripod and you're looking overhead again. And we'll put this back on the car. So guys, as you can see, I've cleaned all the oil out from 
in here and clean all the channels up. As you would have seen in the last clip, we've uh, done the uh, rocker cover gasket. With this, what you've got to do is you've got to put it on very carefully as to not cause it to crease or crink, crease or crinkle up um, and come unstuck. So we'll just put this on very carefully first. And that's now on right so let's just pop that cap on there as well there is a tightening procedure to do these bolts up and not a tightening procedure a tightening sequence and they've all got to be done up at 10 newton meters which is uh, not tight at all because uh, the problem with it is Vauxhall have got this rubber gasket and it seals lovely except if it's too loose or too tight so it's very important that the um, torque settings are adhered to but just for now while I'm putting them in torque settings don't matter because I'm just putting them in by hand and I'm just going to wind them down with the um, socket on the extension all by hand Right, so as you'll see there, I've literally just wound them down far enough so the bottom of the head of the bolt is touching onto the rocker cover, uh, rocker cover. No tighter than that. So now what we'll do is we will literally just... Also, my torque wrench doesn't go down to 10 newton meters, so I'm going to do it just... I'll show you what I do in a minute. So basically, literally, we just start in the middle, at one of the middle ones. A couple of turns on there. And doing like a couple of turns on each one going around in a circular motion to evenly tighten it up So as I was saying guys, with my torque wrench not going down as low as 10 newton meters, what you'll find is I'm cupping the, just a normal quarter inch, uh, sorry, normal 3 8 ratchet. If I cup it there, it effectively becomes a small ratchet. So with that, if I cup it there and I tighten it up so it's firm there, that is usually what I do with these and it never normally causes a problem. So basically, if I was to tighten it there, I can get a lot of leverage on there. But if I tighten it there, there's not much leverage. And literally just do that as tight as I can, like that, which is actually quite hard to do because it's um, your, your hands wanting to slip off sort of thing. But by doing that, it usually ends up that they end up being tight enough but not over tightened and I've never normally had a problem with doing that obviously don't take my word for it the proper speculation is the proper specs are 10 newton meters but that's what I do just so I know I don't over tighten them because over tightening them is worse than not tightening them enough because these will snap very easily so I think now the next plan of action is to put the coil pack in so we don't get no crud going in there. That's that. And obviously I'll leave that one loose because I'm putting the bracket back on there for that sensor later, in, later on. 
So guys, thank you for watching. And um, if you would like to know what I get up to outside of YouTube and the daily sneak peeks for YouTube, you can head over to my Instagram page. That's the ZX guy, same as YouTube channel. And if you would like to watch another one of my amazing videos, you can do that just here because I've got one each side. And if you would like to subscribe, please consider subscribing because it helps the channel grow. You can just do that just here. Take care, guys. Bye for now.